Hi guys, happy Sunday. I am Jessica Pumple. I'm a registered dietitian with Pregnancy and Childhood Nutrition. And today we have a special guest, my husband, Jeff Pumple. Hi, I'm Jeff. <laughs> so we actually have had a kid-free weekend. Uh, Go-Go and Pops, or Grandma and Grandpa, have taken the kids. And so we're kid-free this morning. And so I thought Jeff could pop on and help me out with my show today. So, um, so we're gonna get right into our baby led weaning master class, but first we're gonna do a, um, a little talk about our weekend. So I know that some of you guys put in some um, advice for what we should do for our date night last night, and I wanted to tell you a little bit what, what we did. So first we went to the Vancouver Art Gallery. Yes, that was, that was good. <laughs> and so there was a Claude Monet yeah. exhibit, and then probably the exhibit that we talked about most was we were standing in a room wondering where we should go and all of a sudden we realized that actually that room was the art exhibit. So we thought that it was a lineup and so it had one of those movie theater <laughs> um, like dividers for when you line up, but it had been let down to the ground and it was just diagonal across the room and that was the exhibit. Yeah, you'll have to post pictures afterwards. Well, okay, we'll post a picture with, with, the, with the exhibit. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that's the one we talked about most. And then we went to Stanley Park. We did a really nice walk around along the water side. It was beautiful. And then we went for dinner on the, uh, on the water as well. And then we came back and watched Netflix. <laughs> yeah, we did do that. That's true. It was good. <laughs> and we got a great sleep. It was really fun. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so um, I think we'll get started on our baby led weaning masterclass now. So if you have any questions, um, Jeff is gonna go around to the other side of the camera and um, he's gonna look for comments and so that I can respond to any of your comments. Okay, okay. awesome. All right, I've got some notes here. Okay, so first of all, Baby led weaning is a way of introducing um, food to your baby where the baby is directing the feeding. So just like um, when babies learn to crawl or walk, they, ha they do it kind of at their own developmental pace. When they're ready, they do it. And um, kind of the idea would be that with feeding, um, it goes the same way. So the pediatric guidelines say about six months old, you wanna be introducing, starting to introduce some complementary foods to your baby. Um, but in a developmental phase, this is actually when your baby is first able to sit up, hold its head up, is able to turn and decline foods if they're not interested. Um, so baby led weaning would, how it would look like is sort of family sitting up at the table or, you know, parents and child sitting up at the table. And so the baby would go in a high chair and you would put the appropriate sort of texture, shape, um, food for the baby and the baby would feed itself instead of spoon feeding. And I'm not saying that, um, one is you, you have to do you know only baby led weaning um, or some people do only spoon feeding but you kind of want to know your baby and find the right mix for you so i mostly did baby led weaning partially because um, you know they grew up into such sort of independent meal times were easy it wasn't a lot of extra prep um, you know i didn't have to sit there for a half an hour and spoon feed my baby, I could actually eat my own meal while they were eating their meal, and so mealtime is really fun and enjoyable. Um, however, some babies love to be spoon-fed, and if your baby loves to be spoon-fed, it's not that you can't do it, um, but you just want to figure out what works for your baby. So some of the benefits, um, like I mentioned, are just less food prep and, you know, making purees and freezing them and um, especially you can make a lot of homemade foods so you're not depending on like processed uh, the packages of purees or canned foods um, mealtime is more the baby really enjoys it they sit with the family when they're ready to join in they join in um, we can make sure that they're getting in all their nutrient needs and one of the biggest benefits of it is that they grow they learn to um, listen to their own hunger cues so as 
we age, one of the problems that we're having in our society is that we've um, we've stopped being intuitive eaters, listening to our hunger cues, and when we override those, and I know the system is very complex and there, there's hormones and metabolism and everything involved, but sort of not listening to our own hunger cues is something that is contributing to extra weight, um, obesity, diabetes later in life. So really we want to be raising healthy eaters that are listening to hunger cues right from from the beginning and this is one of the ways to do it. So some of the drawbacks um, to baby led weaning are not necessarily drawbacks but things that parents worry about or definitely they worry about choking and so I'm going to talk about the safety things that we can do to avoid choking. Um, they worry about you know how am I going to if I'm giving you know um, the right texture of foods how am I going to get enough iron or protein into my baby. Um, it's a little bit messier. I think Jeff can, <laughs> he didn't necessarily love the, the mess of kids throwing food on the floor, but feeding is messy anyway. So um, if you can get past the mess, get a splatter plaid. We had um, the, it was like a full coat. It had a, a little like flip at the bottom, but then full arms like plastic bib. Um, so that kind of helped with the mess. And then you just sort of, you know, wash your baby after. Um, and so yeah, not, not too many drawbacks. I guess the other drawback would be um, maybe judgment from other people. So especially our parents' generation, they were definitely taught to spoon feed their babies. And so they have a lot of fears around choking. And so they like to give their advice um, as well. Um, however, we, we do know, and I'll go over the safety things, that we, we can avoid choking and the unsafe um, things. And they can really grow up and to be very independent um, and listening to their own cues type of eaters. Okay. Okay, I want to interrupt you just quickly. Okay. We have a question. Okay. Question is, um, is this easier or can husbands do baby led weaning too? Okay. <laughs> um, so absolutely, any parent or guardian or anyone who is feeding the baby can do baby led weaning. I would suggest that um, like if let's say, I mean the husband and the mother is hopefully on board or the parents are hopefully on board together. Um, you know, if you're a grandparent and the parent isn't necessarily on board, I would probably want to, you know, discuss this as a plan of working together. But absolutely anyone who is, um, transitioning a baby to feeding can do baby led weaning. Okay, so I wanted to get, so usually when a baby is six months old, that's when, um, so up until then they've been exclusively breastfeeding or formula feeding and so no extra water or foods is needed. But when a baby is sitting up, um, they're gonna show cues like starting to reach for food and putting it in their mouth. And that's a sign that if they can sit up on their own, they can pick up food and put it in their mouth that they're probably ready to eat. Actually, with especially with sort of second and third and, and more kids, um, this happens very naturally. So they see what parents are doing, they see what siblings are doing, and they're gonna wanna sit up and participate and just be naturally doing that. So when they're doing that, they're ready to start baby led weaning. So sort of the pediatric guidelines are six months. Um, you can start introducing some of these complementary foods. And with baby led weaning, you're still gonna breastfeed, you're still gonna use for formula, um, and sort of probably about twice a day, you can start to offer foods. And at this point, they're still getting most of their nutrients in from breast milk or formula. So it, you don't need to worry about them getting in a lot. They're just experimenting, they're trying, they're learning. And um, you know, it should be an enjoyable, not stressful experience. So whether you are baby led weaning or you're spoon feeding, um, it's not important that they get in a certain amount from sort of six to nine months. You really don't wanna worry about that. They're getting enough nutrition from breast milk or formula. And so if a baby is turning their head or they don't want to eat, just stop right there. You want them to be intuitive and listened, um, listen to their own hunger cues and, and fullness cues. So when they start to crawl, which is usually about nine months old, although with Vivian, she would think she was about a year when she started to crawl. Um, but when they're crawling, then we can get a little bit more complex with the texture. So what I mean is, for at six months old, we really want to make sure that the food is um, 
So the finger shaped size of food passes a squish test. So we want to be able to squish the food and so that we know that they're not going to choke on it. Um, when we get to nine months old, you can start um, introducing some more crispy foods that dissolve in their mouth. So like some whole grain crackers and things um, to do that. Okay, and then when they get to a year old, that's when um, some people are stopping breastfeeding or formula feeding. If you want to continue breastfeeding up to two years old or farther, that's okay as well. They're still getting important nutrients from that. But starting to introduce at a year, sort of three meals a day and two snacks is a good idea. So at six months, we're, going to, we're offering two, maybe three times a day, not worrying about the amounts. At nine months, we're going to be um, sort of three to four times a day offering some food. And at a year, we're going to go to the three meals and two snacks. So the important safety things for baby led weaning are, um, first of all, offering the, a safe shape and a safe texture. So ideally, we want to do sort of the finger shaped size of food and a texture that is squishable. So for example, I did have a friend who um, started with, they offered mango and mango is very slippery and it's actually can be quite hard and so it's not um, that squishable texture and the baby choked on that. So for safety, um, things like, um, like avocado is very squishy or sweet, like soft baked sweet potato fries or um, scrambled eggs are excellent to offer as well. If you, um, so right before this video, I posted a link with some recipes for it. So in there, I've got some baby burgers. Um, that's a soft texture that you could do. So you're getting iron and protein from that. Also a couple pancake recipes that are high in iron and protein, a muffin recipe that has blackstrap molasses, which is also high in iron. So if you're worried about getting iron in, those are great ways um, and safe textures to add them in. Okay, so for safety, um, of course, all of you, you never want to leave your baby alone and you want to be updated on your CPR. So just with any food, whether it's a um, baby led weeding or spoon feeding, they could choke. And so you just want to make sure that you know if they are choking, you want to have your be updated on your CPR and do that and never leave them alone while they're eating. So sitting at the family table with them and interacting with them. Um, the other thing you want to be careful with is combining textures. So a lot of people are nervous about choking and so they actually go to really thin textures and then when they get a spoon feed they can actually slurp a little bit and then if you are combining that with baby led weaning and then they're getting solid textures and they've been practicing slurping, that's when choking can occur as well. So you want to make sure actually that I didn't combine super thin and um, textures. I provided um, mostly baby led weaning foods, but if we were eating oatmeal or something, I wasn't gonna make a special baby led weaning recipe. The baby's just gonna participate in what we're eating and I might spoon feed that then, but it was actually a thicker consistency and so they weren't getting that learning to slurp and learning to um, navigate food um, as well. So the other, um, thing that you want to watch is of course the unsafe foods. So you want to not do like the round, um, like the bigger blueberries, grapes, hot dogs, not that I would feed my baby hot dog anyways, but just, or popcorn, that, um, that size of food that can get caught in their throat. You want to make sure that you're not giving them those shapes of foods either. Okay. Let's see if I missed anything here. I've got a, a sheet behind me. Um, okay, gagging versus choking. So the other thing is that when you're baby led weaning um, or when you're feeding, it's really normal for gag, uh, babies to gag. So their gag reflex is very far forward and the difference between gagging and choking is actually they're making a sound. So it's common that babies will make that noise or they'll sputter, but as long as they're making a sound, that's okay. They're not choking, stay calm, and they will get it out themselves. If they look like they're about to throw up or they look like they're gagging, but they're not making a sound and they look very panicked, that is choking. So babies won't do this, which is sort of the international sign of choking because they don't know to do that. So they'll probably be flapping their arms, they'll look terrified, their eyes will be big, and they might be making a gagging motion 
but not making any sound. So that's choking and you want to um, do baby hummock move or do CPR right away. Um, and so be familiar with that. So usually flipping your baby upside down, hitting them on the back or doing, yeah. So um, the other thing is how quickly can you get them out of your high chair? So my baby's never choked, but um, my friend that where her baby did choke on mango didn't realize, you know, she didn't really practice getting her baby out of the high chair quickly. And so just being aware, if something did happen, how quickly can you do that? How quickly can you react? And kind of always being ready. That made me feel better anyways. All right. Does anyone have, if you have any other questions, feel free to post them in the comments below. Um, I think, okay, iron fortified foods. I know I wanted to talk about that as well. So foods that are high in iron are going to be your um, meat, veal, chicken, egg yolks, iron. Um, so those are going to be your heme iron and actually uh, liver as well. We absorb heme iron much better. So those are excellent sources of iron. The vegetarian sources of iron, are, even though they may be rich in iron, they're not absorbed as well. That's okay, we still want to include those. So things like um, a very plain um, lentil dull, um, I used to do brown beans squished, and they loved just to pick up like a squished um, cooked brown bean and eat those. Um, soft tofu, like finger-shaped pieces of tofu, um, sliced eggs as well. They used to love to pick up sliced eggs or scrambled eggs. Um, so those are going to be all really great, easily sort of servable um, forms of iron. And then one of the recipes includes iron-fortified rice cereal and um, you can use breast milk or formula, and so that's probably one of the recipes that I would use the most, and those are super easy to take on the go as well. So if you're making the pancakes or you're making the muffins, or even if you um, have a, like a little cooler pack and you wanted to take baby burgers on the go, um, pretty easy to put in a little container or a baggie and take them on the go um, when you're eating out. All right. Um, protein, so kind of iron and protein usually go together and so it's not too hard to get in all of those um, with the recipes and in those protein foods as well. Um, in terms of the sort of the grains and starches, again when you're making the pancakes, the muffins, yam fries, I put a recipe for yam fries in there, um, that, that's good to get in as well. And if your baby does love spoon feeding, it's okay to use um, to supplement with spoon feeding sometimes if, if that's what they enjoy. But again, if you're putting the spoon into the mouth and having to be like, oh, here comes the airplane, um, and they're kind of refusing it, that's okay, just stop. They're not hungry at that moment or they don't wanna try it, and um, you can try again later. All right, so I think that is it for today. Um, if you have any other questions, you can put them in the comments or you can leave a comment after and I will go on and answer them. And we are headed to the zoo pretty soon. We're going to go pick up the kids and we're all going to go to the zoo. And I hope everyone has a great rest of your weekend. Bye.